<laughs> Welcome everyone. We'll try to cover some of the uh, laws of Pesach. Keep the foot to the side. We know that uh, in general the month of Nisan is uh, the whole month is like uh, almost like a Yom Tov because uh, the first 12 days we read the Nasi each uh, tribe will, 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 they were bringing in Corbin. It was a day of festivity to the one who bought the Corbin to his tribe. So we don't say Tachron the whole month. And then uh, from the 14th day, Pesach starts, 14th, the night of the 14th, within the seven days. So the majority of the month is involved with matters of Kedusha, of sanctity. It's a time of a uh, time of joy, and uh, even in these times that uh, it's the uh, it's a little bit hidden, but we have to maintain and to remember that this is the month of Nissan, month of miracles, and uh, we, with Hashem, we'll be able to see Me'az Yosemotik that from the seeming negativity, uh, only good things come. Uh, uh, come about. So uh, the only time is that we, the only uh, obviously if it's uh, days of festivity, you're not allowed to fast, and the only fast that you allowed to do is the tiniest, the fast of the bechorim of the firstborns. So we have, as we said before, you do the uh, come to participate in a seum, and uh, you don't have to, and then you you don't have to fast once you hear the seum. Another thing is that we have to remember that in the month of uh, Nisan, we need to say Birka So if you see fruit, fruit trees that are blossoming, uh, when you see it, you need to say the bracha uh, that nothing was missing in Hashem's world, nothing is missing in Hashem's world, and there is good creatures, good created beings, and there's also uh, good trees that are giving out f flowers and foods. Um, so you need to say the bracha, at least two trees that are giving out foods, and uh, while there are two. So, but the, the not to, when you see trees with food, it's when you see trees blossoming, when the flowers are coming up. Okay, so this is in general. Now, we we'll got to uh, the seder, the, we prepare the bowl, the kaira, so, we know that the way it's supposed to be done is that you have three matzahs on the on the kaira, and uh, and then you have six things that you we're putting on top. What is it? The zoya is the uh, chicken neck, the egg, the mar, the bitter herbs, and the celery. Some use uh, potatoes, onions, chazers, the horseradish. So chabad custom interesting is to look for matzahs that are they're looking like a almost like a ball a little bit uh caving in type of matzahs and uh and to to set them up in a shape of a sego what is the shape of sego you have three dots like a triangle but in dots so on the right side you placing the the right side on the top you place the zoya, which is the chicken neck, roasted, skinned chicken neck. And the left side, you put the egg. In the middle, you put the mara. Then the right side, in the bottom, you put the chawaiset. And the left side, you put the kalpas, celery, potato, the like. So, the zoya, what is the zoya? So our custom is to roast on the eve of Yom Tov the neck of chicken neck uh, to to prepare it for the Seder night as a remembrance for the Korban Pesach, the Paschal offering. That's the remembrance for the Paschal offering. Our custom is to remove um, some of the meat almost enti uh, entirely, to remove the meat from the zoya, from the neck so it should not have any kind of similarity to a carbon Pesach. 
but you need to leave a little bit of meat on the bone because uh, a bone without without meat is not a tabshil, it's not considered a not considered a dish, so you have to leave something on it. But you should try to leave the minimal amount so it uh, should not be a uh, you shouldn't be tempted to eat it or you shouldn't mistakenly come to eat it because of the issue of Korban Pesach. You can't eat uh, anything that resembles the Paschal offering. And this is a remembrance for the Paschal offering. Another thing is the egg. Uh, the custom is, right, we said to the left side, the right side is the Zohar, the left side would be the egg. So what is the egg uh, resembling? Is the Korban Chagig. It was a Korban of festivity that used to be and brought on the holidays. So therefore we take a regular ch chicken egg, a boiled egg, and uh, we p place it to the left. We ha you have to boil the eggs on air of Pesach, right, before Pesach. So when the Seder comes, when you come from the shul, it's going to be uh, ready. Really, you can cook it on Yom Tov. If it's Yom Tov, you're allowed to cook on Yom Tov. And you're allowed to do it. If you forgot, you're allowed to do it. But we want it. The idea is when you come from Shul, hopefully this year we'll be going to Shul, but if not, whenever you come, time for the Seder, it will be ready for you. You don't have to start um, gathering all the simonim, all the uh, ingredients for the Cairo, for the, for the bowl. And Kalpas... Kalpas really translate to celery in Hebrew, but Chabad custom is to eat onion or um, potato, a cooked, baked cooked potato, um, instead of a kalpas, instead of celery, and we dip it in salt water. Now, what is mallow, uh, the bitter herbs? Custom is to take leafy uh, green uh, vegetables, which is uh, lettuce, romaine lettuce, and uh, also the horseradish, the the root, we call chrein. They actually use uh, those who eat uh, filter fish, put chrein on top. It's the same material, just without all the uh, seasoning. So the root of the horseradish. The lettuce, have to, obviously, you have to check well for bugs and make sure that it's clean. And, uh, and it's dry because you're going to put it on the matzah to make sure it's, it's, uh, it's dry very well. And... Uh, and you have to put it on the kairo, on the ball. And to, when we eat it koirech, we, we have to make sure that it's not going to be shuya, that it's not going to be gibracht, it's not going to be wet. It's not going to, to wet the matzah. So that's why we have to be using the romaine lettuce as, as more, but uh, just make sure it's clean and dry. The chrein, the uh, horseradish, you, we grind it before, uh, before Yom Tov because uh, you're not allowed to use the grinder, this uh, grinder on Yom Tov. should not be used on Yom Tov. If you forgot to do it before Yom Tov, you need to do it with a knife, but it's not going to be the same quality. So we got to make sure to do so it. Hot, it's strong. Yeah. yeah. So you got to do it before Yom Tov. Use the grinder, because you can't use the grinder on Yom Tov. Chaloises, what is chaloises? So you take uh, also grind apples, pears, and nuts, and you make the uh, this mixture a little bit uh, creamy, and uh, as a remembrance for the mud, the the brick and mortars that our forefathers were subjugated and enslaved in its time, and in the, the Seder night, when you're dipping the mall, you have to when you're dipping the mall in the choices, you have to add a tiny bit of wine to the uh, right. red wine to the choices, and the remembrance for the blood that the Egyptians used the the one of the uh, cruelty were to uh, take uh, Jewish children and to put them in the in the mud, use them as a as a stucco. I didn't hear about the potato yet. Yeah. No, I told you the kalpas, the Chabad custom is to to use instead of celery to use. Potato or onion. Because you put the potato in the salt water without a bracha. Oh, no, I'm talking about the kaira itself. Oh, so that's so the separate, kaira, yeah. that potato yeah, separate the kaira from the kaira. No, it's when you eat it, you take it and you dip it in salt water. But right. first you prepare it. So, 
we add a little bit of wine to the chaloisa before we dip to the uh, before we dip the mole in the chaloisa. And if you forgot to prepare the chaloisa, you are, you are allowed to uh, grind the apples and the pears in, using the grinder with a little bit of a change. Do it differently. Maybe doing it on top of a napkin or on top of a clay or on top of a vessel. Um, so the best, obviously, to do it before. But if you didn't, you're allowed to do it on Yom Tov, but in a machinery in a different uh, type of a way. And they're not. You should obviously use a knife to uh, chop them down. Then we have to prepare salt water. The salt water also we need to prepare by Erev Pesach because we're going to dip the carpas, which we said before could be either way, uh, celery, potato, or uh, onion. So we, so we prepare the salt water, and we're allowed to prepare the salt water on Yom Tov. And if Pesach falls on Shabbat, if Pesach falls on Shabbos and you forgot to prepare before Shabbos, you should prepare a little bit of salt water, water exactly what you need for uh, dipping. You're not allowed to prepare on Shabbos salt water with high, um, that are highly concentrated with salt, which is uh, maybe uh, three quarters of salt and the rest of it, or three quarters of water. And the ratio should not be a third of, of uh, water and two thirds of, of salt. So but the best, again, the best to do it is before Yom Tov to avoid any questions of preparing something. This year is a little bit easier because it doesn't fall on Shabbos. Although it goes into Shabbos, but it does not fall on Shabbos. So it's, you're allowed to prepare the salt water on Yom Tov. Red wine, you need to, it says it's best, the best for the Seder night is to use red wine for drinking the four cups because it has remembrance for the blood that was spilled by, by Pharaoh when he slaughtered Mona Litzlan, the Jewish children. But uh, if the, the white wine is a more prestigious type of wine, um, it's a high, better quality, then the, then the white is better than the, than the red. But in general, it's, if you can find good wine that is red wine, It'll be enjoyable for you and for your family. Uh, it's, it's good to have that type of uh, wine for the Seder. Now setting the table before Yom Tov should be done before. You know, so you can start the Seder without delays. So you should try to find uh, beautiful dishes uh, to the best of your ability. Even if you're not using them for uh, the Seuda, but at least the remembrance for freedom, you should try to have the best, uh, the nicest uh, utensils possible. You prepare your seat, it should be comfortable seat, to give you a feeling of freedom. I heard that people take out the best silver and put all the silver yeah. around. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, so it like... should be like Achilas, uh, Achilas Melochim, like the king's uh, festive meal. That's how we should feel on at least on the day of uh, the night, the Seder night. And uh, we should also prepare a broken vessel. A broken vessel, because you can't make a broken vessel on Yom Tov, because then you're making a kli, because you, you, you need to use a broken vessel to spill the wine. When we say uh, the, uh, the 10 plagues, we spill a little bit of wine this each time. Plastic. So if you're gonna, if you have, but even if you use a plastic, you need to have a, a little bit of, of a broken vessel to have a uh, too deep from uh, so the, I guess to, to should pull tear from the tear yeah should tear a little bit from the plastic before, before. Okay. yeah so that's I have to make sure now uh, no but on so first of all welcome to Yosef and second of all no Jew is a broken vessel and uh, especially on, 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 especially on Pesach, we should feel like kings. We are on Pesach, it's a, it's a time of Lel Shimurim, it's a night that we are all guarded by Hashem, we are all loved by Hashem, it's a special night to ask for whatever you need. Actually, I was just telling Yishmo, the, uh, I, I heard it today, the first time, so he said, if you look at the Agada, when we get to the point of 
Manishtana, when we ask the four questions, so it says over there, in small letters, it says, Khan of Ben Shoyal. Here, your children have to ask the questions, the four, four kashis, the four questions, and uh, everyone, uh, to give a chance to every child to, to say the questions, then, and then even if you don't have children, you still have to say, uh, you still have to say the uh, four questions. But then there's another beautiful interpretation. It says, Khan here, we are the children, we are the sons. Hashem is the father. It says here, the son can ask whatever he wants. Whatever you want to be, whatever you want to have, you can ask at that point, right before the four questions, because Khan, here, Ben Shor, the son is asking. The son can ask for whatever he needs. So there's no room for bitterness at the night of the Seder. We have to be joyful. At that time, it's we are now at the moment of freedom. So it, it, everything has its time. The Alter of Rights and Tanya. Everything has its time. Wisdom is to know what, where, what, when is the time for this, when is the time for that. It's, we have to sometimes it's, it has to be against our nature to do something that is not uh, maybe we're comfortable with, but uh, we have to be besimcha, especially the month of Nisan, and how much more so when we get to the night of the Seder. Now, another point is, we have to try to, we have to be careful not to, uh, not, uh, not to compare the meat to Korban Pesach. So, what does it mean? You can't, because now not allowed to eat Korban Pesach, we're not in Yerushalayim, we're not in Eretz Yisrael, we're not in Yerushalayim, and we're not in a state of purity. So we're not allowed to say meat of an animal that this is a chayo oif, like it's whether it's a domesticated, non-domesticated, a fowl, whether it's slaughtered, whether it's not, whether it's. So we are not allowed to say basel zele pesach. This meat is for pesach. Why? Because it sounds like you are by saying it. It's like you're sanctifying it as a Korban Pesach. You're consecrating it as Korban Pesach. So rather, you, you what do you need to say? You said this meat is for Yom Tov. Yom Tov, it's, it's a little bit of vague. When you say this is for Pesach, it could mean this is for Korban Pesach. So to begin with, um, you should try to avoid saying this is for Pesach. Because it seems like even on money, money that you're going to use for to buy certain things for Pesach, you try to avoid saying this is for Pesach, rather say this is for Yom Tov. Ah. Our custom is not to eat at the night of the Seder roasted meat. You can eat meat, but not roasted meat. Because some would might uh, err and think that uh, this is a... Tzliyesh, this is a roasted uh, meat. This is the Korban Pesach. But what do you mean by so, roasted meat? Roasted is, uh, is like barbecued, directly on, on fire. On the spit, yeah. right? On the spit, so not, on the fire. Does that. Why not? I mean, you're allowed except to, in Argentina they might do it. Better. Right, yeah, you're allowed to have, uh, I mean, no, but I'm saying, in general, in Yom Tov, you can, you can do a barbecue well, in Yom Tov. I know, but we're putting so, stuff in the oven, yeah, so, so we're not really doing yeah, that. You do it in the oven, it's fine, but uh, just make sure it's not roasted not the same thing as on the yeah. like, but I got it. Whether it's, it's... Regardless, you should try to avoid it. Ve'im, roitze. So, uh, if you did make it, don't eat it night of the Seder. You can eat it the following, the following day. Um, another thing is, it says, Yeshli Zoya, person, you have to be careful not to eat from the Zoya. As I mentioned before, the roasted... Um, chicken neck, make sure not to eat from it. It says if you want, you can eat from it the following day. By us, you have two days of, of uh, Pesach, so we shouldn't eat from it the following day. Rather, we should eat, um, if you want to eat that uh, chicken neck, you can eat it later, but not on uh, not on uh, the night of the Seder. Another thing is that uh, we, we should be careful It says meat that was first baked or cooked and then was roasted some people go through different levels of cooking so sometimes roasting and then cook and then cooking or vice versa it's you should not eat it um, at the night of the sale while in salu but if they roast it and then 
uh, cooked and then it was cooked, then you're allowed to eat it the Seder, but vice versa, you should not, should not be done. If it was cooked and then roasted, but if the last thing was roasting, then you shouldn't use it for the night of the Seder. But if the last thing was cooking, then you're allowed to eat it in the night of the Seder. Another major mitzvah that we have at the night of the Seder is the Gada Tolabin Chalis, to say the story of the Agada. Beside of eating, eating matzah, drinking wine, a great mitzvah is the Gada Tolabin You have to have questions and answers, a lot of Q&As in the time of the Seder. Manishtano, should, each, each one should say the questions, they should read the Haggadah word by word. If you, you don't have a son, you should, your wife should ask you. If you don't have a wife, you're sitting with your friend, your friend should ask the question, then you ask the question. If you're sit, sitting by yourself, you should ask the question to, your, to, to yourself. After the question, we repeat the questions, and then we start with the answers. The answers starts with our body Mainu, we were slaves to power. That really answers all the changes that we have that night. You go through the agada; it gives the answers for all the questions, and then by doing so, you're doing the fulfilling the mitzvah of Igadat Lobincha to tell your son the story of the agada, and you're allowed to elaborate in your own ex- uh, way, in your own exp- uh, language, level, whatever it is. You're allowed to elaborate on it and explain to them the miracles of the agada, and there's a lot of midrashim, a lot of Amuletics that explaining the Haggadah. We say the Haggadah out loud, uh, with melody, with joy, with great kavana, with great uh, mindfulness and in- intention. And our custom is to say it, to say it sitting and reclining. We saying sitting, not reclining. Reclining is done for for eating matzah and drinking wine. But the custom Chabad custom is to say the Haggadah without reclining, not reclining, but bekavana gdoilu v'sim chorabo. With great joy, with great kavana, and we say the four. Uh, we say the words "dam ve'ish," fire, a uh, blood, timuris oshon, and and smoke. We spilling three times from the cup into a blemished um, keli. You can see it in the Agada. It describes exactly when to do it, and when we mention the three, um, the mnemonic for the three, or rather the acronym for the three plagues, for the ten plagues, we say datzach, which is. Uh, acronym in three for the ten plagues. So the Tzach Hadash Be'achav really covers um, all ten plagues. So we also spill uh, with, with spilling. So you total how many times we spill. We have three times. Dam Eish Timo Yisoshon is, is three times. And then the ten, it's thirteen. And then another three, it's sixteen. And then we have to fill the cup again. So that's a, that's a Enough for today. Um, we'll uh, I'll have another uh, video on the Tanya of today, and the Parsha, uh, rather Geula, and uh, and Yaakov. So stick with us. I'll see you soon.